What is up guys? So you recently bought yourself a brand new LG OLED and what is the one thing in the back of your mind when you bought said OLED? Burn in, right? Everyone likes to talk about burn in. It's the boogeyman in the room when you talk about OLED televisions, whether it be from Sony or LG. Now, one thing I will say before we dive into tips and tricks to prevent burn in on your LG OLED or your Sony OLED for that matter, is that newer generations of OLED TVs like the C10, the C1, the A90J, A80J, these TVs are much more resistant nowadays to burn in than they were several years ago. It's a much more mature technology, it's a much more mature product. And so there are many tools at your disposal as an OLED owner to prevent burn in, but also inherently the TVs, the panels themselves, are just simply more resistant to burn in than they were say in 2014, 2015, when the technology was much younger, when it was more in an infancy stage, when it was developing. So specifically if you're using your LG OLED as a PC monitor, this will be helpful for you. I would recommend you have a dark background. A lot of people will say you should have just a pure black background. You could do that, but for me, I need a little bit something on my backgrounds. So I go with sort of a darker background like you see here. And I'll change it like every three or four days just so I don't have the same background on my LG OLED for weeks on end because then you're really going to increase your chances of image retention that could lead to burn in eventually. Now the next thing I would recommend is that you hide your taskbar. So you can see here when I'm not using my taskbar it auto hides. When I go down to use it it pops back up. So the way you can make sure that your taskbar auto hides is right click, personalize, come down to taskbar and you see right here automatically hide the taskbar in desktop mode that is on and then I also have used small taskbar buttons that's on that's just a preference thing but you definitely I would recommend you automatically hide your taskbar and then the next thing is you see here when I when I open up my Windows Explorer it's a dark theme everything is dark or accented with a darker gray I would highly recommend that instead of using a really white blaring window screen I would definitely use a dark theme so again right click Personalize, themes is what we want, right? Color, dark gray. So choose your color right here, dark. Transparency effects are on. And then recent accent colors right here, it's dark gray. That's as dark as you can go. I wouldn't recommend using anything brighter because you're just going to increase your chances of burning. So try to stay with a dark grayish accent color with a dark theme and also include transparency effects. Anytime you can have transparency in there, you're going to reduce your risk of burn in because you're not having solid bright colors sitting on your screen. So that's the first and foremost thing I would do to recap a dark background, hide your taskbar, use a dark theme and use dark gray accents. The next thing is if you use Google Chrome, what you can do is you can go to turnoffthelights.com and that will allow you to download an extension that turns most websites automatically into their dark mode. So it's basically a dark mode for Google Chrome. So if you go here into your options and you go to settings, you go down to extensions, you'll see turn off the lights. The entire page will be fading to dark so you can watch the videos as if you were in the cinema. Works for YouTube and beyond. So any websites that have a dark mode, not all websites do have a dark mode. As far as I can tell, Yahoo doesn't have one. I've looked for one, I can't find one. Even with this turn off the lights extension on Google Chrome, when I go to Yahoo, it's still bright, bright white, as you can see here. If I open up a new page and I go home, look at how bright that is. You're definitely gonna increase your odds of burn in when you blare your screen like this in this bright white. So. It's unfortunate that Yahoo doesn't have a, a dark version or accent version yet, but I'm sure they will in due time. A lot of websites are doing this now. But if a website you go to does have a dark theme or option, then this turn off the lights extension will automatically engage it. So watch what happens when I go to YouTube, for example. Dark. I really, really like that. Nice and dark. Facebook. Dark. So as you can see, you know, a lot of these pages, they automatically have been transformed into their dark themes or variants by having this turn off the lights extension in Google Chrome. 
There are also other great browsers you could use that have similar functions. I'm sure Mozilla probably has one. All the major browsers out there probably have something similar at this point, just because OLED technology has become so popular. And a lot of these companies that have these really, really popular and important browsers, they recognize that more and more people are using OLED, so they're trying to cater to that audience. Now, if I were you, I would use SDR when using your OLED as a PC monitor. There's many reasons for this, primarily because I feel like HDR implementation on Windows 10 is not very good. We are going to get Windows 11 soon, so hopefully HDR implementation is better on that. I may rethink my process once I have a chance to try out Windows 11, but as it stands right now, Windows 10 HDR implementation is not very good, so I just stick with SDR+. Plus. When you're sitting, you know, three, four feet from your screen, when you're using your OLED as a monitor, the last thing you want to do is blast your eyes with super bright HDR content for hours on end. It's just going to give you a headache. So that's another reason why I use SDR. Plus, a lot of these websites, like I just showed you, like Yahoo, they don't have dark themes or variants. And so if this, were, this page were in HDR, it's going to sear out your retinas. It's just going to blow out your eyeballs. So... I, I keep my Windows 10 and my OLED in SDR. And then what I do in the settings, anytime you can keep your OLED light and your contrast on the lower side, you do yourself and your panel a service. You definitely stave off burn-in. So I have, I use game optimizer picture mode and you go down to advanced settings and I set my brightness at 35 OLED pixel brightness and 60 contrast and then the screen brightness is 50 as default and I have my gamma at 2.4. I feel like 35 OLED pixel brightness and 60 contrast is a good happy medium between daytime and nighttime viewing. It's, it's quite bright at night but not so bright that it's uncomfortable for my eyes and it's just bright enough during the day to fight off any kind of screen glare or ambient lighting. I also use, just to kind of give my eyes a break, if you go to, scroll down here, nope, reduce blue light, here it is. I have reduce blue light on, this kind of cuts down on the blue light that the OLED emits and makes it more yellowish in nature. This is much more forgiving on your eyes and it also helps your circadian rhythms and it sort of warms up the screen and makes it a little bit darker at the same time too, so you're helping to stave off burn in that way. And then also another important tip and trick I, I would have is if you're using your OLED as a PC monitor, for sure, you want to make sure you have a screensaver engaged. You don't want to get up and walk away from your OLED TV and forget about it for 20 minutes and realize you just left, you know, Yahoo open with all those searing white boxes. You know, you don't want to do that. So I would recommend you set your screensaver to anywhere from three to four minutes. So meaning when you get up from your OLED, after a period of three or four minutes of inactivity, the screensaver on Windows 10 automatically engages. And you can have the screensaver just be a black screen, just fade to black and then you're good to go. Of course, you don't wanna forget about the built-in anti-burn-in features on your LG OLED, specifically the C10 and the C1. I think the C9 may have some of these features as well. You'll see OLED screensaver. Now this is a very important section right here. Pixel cleaning, otherwise known as panel refresh on the Sony OLEDs. You do not want to run pixel cleaning and panel refresh on your Sony OLEDs or your LG OLEDs. You don't want to run this manually unless you absolutely have to. I have a vi uh, video specifically about this topic. The video explains exactly what pixel refresh does, or pixel clean in this instance, what panel refresh does on these Sony OLEDs. Suffice to say, if you're interested in that topic, check out that video. But anytime that you have some sort of screen uniformity issue, you have what you think is image retention, sure. Use pixel cleaning, use panel refresh, use pixel refresh, whatever. That's fine. Otherwise, do not manually engage pixel cleaning, pixel refresh, panel refresh on your OLED unless you absolutely have to because it's running this pixel cleaning process can be a very taxing process on your panel and it can actually, if used repeatedly over time unnecessarily, it can shorten the lifespan of your television, of your LG OLED or your Sony OLED. So don't, please, please, please don't run pixel or panel refresh 
unless you see an issue uh, with the uniformity on your screen, whether it's some form of banding, image retention, what have you, okay? And again, I'll leave a link in the description below to my other video, which talks specifically about this topic at length. One thing you should know about pixel and panel refresh is that the reason why you don't run it manually is because in the background, it's already running automatically. After every four hours of use, your LG OLED will do a quick seven minute pixel refresh or pixel cleaning. And then after every 2000 hours of screen time, your television will do an automatic one hour long pixel refresh or pixel cleaning. So there's no need to manually run it because your TV is taking care of itself in the background. Okay, it's sort of like set it and forget it. All right, and then as far as screen move, you wanna make sure that this is engaged. I believe on the C10, it's called pixel shift. Now, what this does is it just basically moves incrementally and very, very, uh, by small amounts, you won't even notice it as the viewer. It shifts the pixels to the right or to the left or down or up so that they're not always being subjected to the same, for instance, if you're watching CNN or Fox News, that same logo on the bottom right, pixel shift will move those pixels over so that they're not always subjected to that same bright logo. Adjust logo brightness. Uh, if you really are worried about burning, you should probably put this on high. That is the safest setting. If you want some protection, you can just leave it on low. I would not advise you put it on off because then you are not dimming or making transparent any of the logos on these channels that you watch religiously. Like, for instance, again, CNN or Fox News. If you're always watching CNN, if it's running for hours and hours and hours, what logo luminance adjustment or adjust logo brightness will do is it will dim said logo, it will make said logo somewhat transparent so that it's not subjecting those pixels to that same high voltage, that same bright color, hour after hour, day after day. Because if you keep subjecting them to the same color, the same logo, the same intensity, day after day, week after week, month after month, you will get image retention and it will turn into burn-in. So definitely keep adjust logo brightness or logo luminance adjustment on the C10. Keep it at least at low, but I would probably recommend high for most people. Uh, the only reason you wouldn't use high is that some reviewers, specifically artings.com, have shown that by using high here, uh, it tends to negatively impact the brightness of high dynamic range. So they recommend you put it on low, but Anecdotally speaking, using the C10 for over a year now, using the C1 for about two months, or almost two months, I haven't experienced any difference in SDR or HDR brightness by using low logo brightness or high. So I'm inclined to just keep it at high right now, honestly. Uh, and then that, that's really it for OLED screensaver. You can also engage energy saving if you want. If you put energy saving to maximum, the screen really, really dims. And by default, that's going to save your panel from being exposed to really, really bright static images. And of course, the chance that you develop burn-in will be much less. However, the problem is when you have energy saving set to maximum or medium, you're really going to sacrifice screen brightness. You're really going to sacrifice HDR performance. So I don't use this. I just set this to off. I just make sure, as I showed you earlier, my contrast and pixel brightness levels are low to offset this. And then one last thing uh, that I've seen other YouTubers talking about, which I think is a really handy little tip, is if you come to picture and you go to aspect ratio, there is this four-way zoom option. So you can zoom the screen. So if you have a logo that's in the bottom right, again, like CNN or Fox News, and you want to try to get that logo off the screen, if, take a look at the clock in the bottom right. See the clock right there and, you know, my little speaker icon, all that stuff. It's kind of bright white. So you wouldn't want the 12 being there for a full hour on your uh, taskbar and potentially burning in, right? So you can adjust the zoom. So boom, boom, and it's gone. See? One more and it's completely gone. So if you had a logo that was just taking up a little bottom hand corner of your screen, you can adjust the zoom so that it's completely removed from your image and also this recycle bin. Watch what happens here. There it goes, it's gone. By using this four-way zoom option, it gives you the ability to 
manipulate the screen a little bit to kind of move logos just off of the edge of your screen or just below or above the edge of your screen so that they are not uh, static elements that sit there for hours on end and really tax your panel. Okay guys, uh, that's pretty much all I have for tips and tricks. If I have forgotten anything, I apologize. If you have any additional suggestions that I am not aware of or I did not touch on in this video, please by all means leave them in the comment section down below. And until next time guys, I will see you later. Peace.